from Psalm 74, verses 9 through 17. When you're ready, say amen. amen. We are given no miraculous signs, no prophets are left, and none of us know how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, O oh God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garment and destroy them. But you, O oh God, are a king from of old. You bring salvation upon the earth. It was you who split, excuse me, it was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the hands of the monsters in the waters. It was you who crushed the hands, heads of Lebethan and gave him as food to the creatures of the desert. It was you who opened up your springs and streams. You dried up the ever-flowing rivers. This day is yours, and yours also the right. You established the sun and moon. It was you who set all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of this word.
single answer. You give him glory. Place, you'll 
jolted out of the ordinary because God is up to something. God says in Isaiah, Behold, I will do a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. You see, when there's a vine interruption, there's a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, a life-changing encounter with the all mighty God, because God is the master of divine interruptions. So with that in mind, I pose this question to you, does God have permission to interrupt your life? You see, for the past year and 10 months, we've faced unprecedented times like never before. The economic, racial, political, education, financial, every area of our lives, and yes, even spiritual. But throughout the Bible, we see examples of divine interruptions. Noah was interrupted to build an ark. Old Abraham had to uproot his family to establish a new nation. Moses stopped herding sheep to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. The disciples dropped their fishing nets to follow Jesus. Saul was interrupted on the road to Damascus to become Paul, and he dealt with many interruptions, shipwreck, persecution, jail, a thorn in his side. And when we look to Jesus, we see him constantly being interrupted, yet Jesus made himself interruptible. As time and time again, we see the Lord stop what he is doing to perform miracles, to turn water into wine, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. I believe God wants us to be ready for divine interruptions. You see, divine interruptions don't have to be seen as thieves that take away from us. They can be seen as divinely orchestrated construction zones that God adds to our lives. If you're like me, you oftentimes want a bypass, a freeway with no stoplights, no traffic jams, and takes you around the construction zone. But guess where God wants you to go? Right through a pothole gravel-covered construction zone, especially designed by God for your spiritual construction. I believe one of the greater blessings we can experience is God's divine interruption into our lives. In 1 Samuel 1 and 7, when God gave the Israelites victory over their Babylonian enemies, after they won the battle, Samuel set up a stone on the battlefield between Mizpah and Shin. And he named it Ebenezer. Ebenezer means the stone of help. And he declared, this marks the place where the Lord has helped me. You see, Samuel wanted people to remember from generation to generation to generation that this is where the Lord has helped me. Now interestingly, Psalm 74 was written by Samuel's grandson, Asaph. And if I use my spiritual imagination, I see Asaph walking along as a child, looking at that stone, wondering, what does that stone mean? going to Grandpa Samuel and asking Grandpa Samuel, what does this stone mean? What does this signify? Like the stories I heard my grandmother, the late Reverend Ethel B. Tatnell, telling her stories of being a missionary and pastoring a small little country church in Roanoke, Virginia, getting on the train and traveling once a month to Roanoke to minister to her flock. Her war room, that I didn't know then was a war room, but I know that there was a room that she went in and she prayed for hours. And we, weren't, we couldn't go in that room, but when we peeked and looked in there, there was this worn out rug where her knees had prayed and she had been on her knees praying. And when I saw the movie, the war room, you seen it, I said, you know, that's what my grandmother had. She had a war room. 
She was a prayer warrior. So getting back to Asaph, Asaph goes to Grandpa Samuel and asks him, what does this stone mean? And, Gra and Grandpa Samuel says, that's the stone where the Lord helped me. How many have an Ebenezer stone where you can look back and say, this is where the Lord helped me. This is where the Lord brought me through. So when Asaph was thinking back in 74, in Psalm 74, all of this devastation and no signs from the Lord and the, the monster, this metaphorical monster that he's talking about for us is this pandemic, this COVID-19 virus. When he thought about that, he wrote these words to Psalm 74. So this morning I say to you, in the midst of these perilous times, I want you to consider this as a season of divine interruptions orchestrated by God. Raise your Ebenezer stone and celebrate what God is doing. Now Psalm 74 can be a difficult passage. It's not a passage like Psalm 23 or Psalm 91 or Psalm 100, the familiar ones that we know. It's a difficult passage because it's written from the perspective of exile in the face of evil. There's no miraculous signs. There are no prophets. God seems silent. It addresses our current situation in a powerful way. We too have experienced things that made us wonder why God hasn't intervened. We have some of the same questions that the psalmist had. So what does this psalm teach us about divine interruptions? In the opening verses, verse 1, Asaph writes, God, why have you rejected us forever? In those opening verses, he asks God some difficult questions. He goes on to describe their situation in detail. The enemy has damaged everything. Our safety is threatened. The psalm is so applicable to us today because we too have questions about why God allowed this to happen. Or maybe it's another situation in your life, not even related to the pandemic. And you're wondering, in your circumstances. Lord, why has this happened to me? Why have you allowed this to happen? Psalm 74 lets us know it's okay to ask the questions. Asaph did, Job did, and so have God's people in the past. Psalm 74 calls us to a robust faith that even when God is silent, we can look back and see where he has brought us from. Psalm 74 challenges us to focus on the power of God. There are other places in scripture, like Psalm 22 and 1, when David laments, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But then David says, yet you are holy, the praises of Israel surround your throne. And Job, who was afflicted like none other in history, says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And you know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were thrown in the fiery furnace because they wouldn't worship the idols, said, our God is able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we are not going to serve your God. Asaph looks at the destruction and the rubble. He says, Jerusalem and the temple are destroyed, yet my God is king. There's a virus in the land. There's a lot going on across the land, yet God is king. So how can we come together during these tumultuous times? How can we respond when God divinely interrupts our lives. I want to lift up a few points. In verse 12, Asaph says, you bring salvation upon the earth. Through salvation, we receive deliverance and redemption. Psalm 56 and 3 says, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in an all 
powerful God. A God who reveals that our strength for the present and our hope for the future is not based on the stability of our own experience, but on the fidelity of Almighty God. You see, God's timing is always purpose. In the Greek, chronos or chronological time, it's Sunday, October the 10th, 2021, 10.34 a.m. But in Kairos, which is God's timing, this is the time for divine interruptions. Oh, that Samaritan woman experienced a divine interruption in John chapter 4 when she came to draw water from the well and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Sometimes it may seem like the Samaritan woman that we're stuck in a repeated cycle of failure. And then in a moment of divine interruption, a word from Jesus changes the trajectory of our lives. And we run and shout like the Samaritan woman, come see a man who told me everything I did. He is the Messiah. Come see a man who brings salvation on the earth. Secondly, he says in verse 12, you, O oh God, are my king. Again, he says it from of old. And because God is sovereign, because he is omnipotent, because he is omnipresent, because he is omniscient, because he is all-powerful, because he is the great I am, we give him thanks according to 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, in all things, in all circumstances, According to James 5 and 16, we count it all joy, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we know that according to Romans 8, 28, God works all things together for our good. In a divine interruption, the Holy Spirit breaks through into your everyday routine. In Exodus 3, Moses turned aside and he saw a burning bush. And he wondered why it was not consumed. And God spoke to him through the burning bush. The king of kings will gate crash into your ordinary with his glory. That prayer you've been praying and believing God for is about to be manifested through a divine interruption. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming into your ordinary with his extraordinary power. Third, in a divine interruption, God allows us to see him show up at our place of need. You see, in John 20, the disciples were gathered behind locked doors. And suddenly, Jesus was standing among them. Jesus said, peace be with you. A divine interruption happens as Jesus steps into your hiding place. Oh, you know about those secret places that nobody else knows about but you and the Lord. Jesus will step right in and speak peace to your soul. What does the song say? He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And lastly, in a divine interruption, there is breaking news from heaven. In Luke 2, 8 and 9, it says, Now there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. When a divine interruption takes place, it's time to pay attention to what God is doing. It's time to allow God to humble us in our wilderness experience to prepare us for the promised land. God said, I am doing a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness. Streams in the desert. I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I realize that over the years, I've often faced divine interruptions. I've learned and I'm still learning and when it seems like I've been forsaken, when I don't understand the circumstances, God wants me to hold on to my faith. You see, in July 
2015, I was diagnosed with cancer. And I had these, some of these same questions that ASAP had. Why, Lord, why me? I try to do the right thing. I try to serve you. But it was a divine interruption that I realized then because God brought me closer to him. And now five years later, as a cancer survivor, I can truly thank the Lord for this divine interruption in my life. I want you to know that you can look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. And you can declare with Asaph, with Job, with the Hebrew children, with the great cloud of witnesses, I will trust in the Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. Oh, that's something to praise the Lord for. Hallelujah. That's something to praise the Lord for. Our world has paused to an unprecedented pandemic, yet God is king. We sometimes feel like refugees in our own homes, yet God is king. We suffer from a virus that has taken some of our loved ones, our friends, our family, yet God is king. In the midst of the divine interruption, God says, I am removing shame from generations. I am changing your story. Things that you have been praying about for a long time, for children, for grandchildren, family situations, a husband, a wife, a relationship, a job, finances, whatever it is, God says, I am changing it. I am coming to the stuck places. I am breaking into situations that you thought there was no way out as you allow the Holy Spirit to commandeer your plans and interrupt your comfort zones, God is doing a new thing. Yeah. Through it all, trust in him. Yet praise him. Yet serve him, for he is King of kings and Lord of lords. My father's children, we have a sacred privilege of remembering what God has already done. And look to the cross. For it was on the cross of Calvary that Jesus bore the silence of God for our sins. Jesus took upon himself the evil and suffering of a sinful world. Our Heavenly Father is never out of options. God is not silent. God's answer is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the precious Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the prince of peace. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting father. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the great I am. He is my light and he is my salvation. He is our refuge and he is our strength. He is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. He is the lover of our soul. He is our Jesus, we find. He's my everything.